And so together, I, I think I have uh, improved my skin over the years. If you look at my photos from even five years ago mm -hmm. uh, and, and even 10 years ago, my skin was not as good. And mm -hmm. so that's really shows that the power of science can actually work. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of these things I'm talking about today are backed by scientific studies. I'm super excited about this one. I think this is the most exciting one I've, I've been on with you. Um, I'm mm -hmm. excited about hearing all your secrets because your skin is unbelievably good. And <laughs> I wouldn't even reveal how old you are, but I'm, I'm amazed at how you look. Oh, thank you. That's super kind. Um, well, we're here to, re to reveal secrets today, at least some secrets. Um, but let's 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 definitely go into because everyone wants to know yours. Everyone thinks that you look thirty, even though you're fifty-two, and I can say your age because that's probably. Well, I'm I'm going to share some secrets today. I think. Ah. Oh. If you ask the right questions. Oh, okay. Well, then let's get to it. How, maybe we should start. Let's start with what visual age is versus your uh, epigenetic age, and this is something that you talked about in your last podcast. And you know, in kindness to our audience who goes to download and listen to your podcast and come up with the questions. I definitely want to address some of the things you guys brought up uh, in your podcast with Matt. So people don't really know what that means. What is what is visual age versus epigenetic age? Um, and why, why do we start to look old? Well, we, we have two clocks in our bodies. We have birthday candles, which is the number of times the earth has gone around the sun. That's mm -hmm. really not really age, uh, how old you are. It's not. Uh, no, your your real your actual biological age you can change you can slow it down, you mm -hmm. can stop it. Uh, we're even learning ways to reverse it. It's early days. Oh. But we we published a paper a year ago in Nature that we can reverse the age of of tissues uh, in animals, but we think we can do it in people too. Mm -hmm. um, so your biological age is the most important, and and there are a number of ways of measuring that. One key measure is called the epigenetic clock. So also known as the Horvath clock, named after yes. our, our buddy, uh, Steve Horvath. Now, we can measure this by taking a blood sample, by taking a skin sample. Usually, it's the inside of the cheek or a spit. Uh, mm -hmm. And we can measure that on a DNA sequencing machine, and we measure the chemicals on the, on the DNA. And that tells us, with some accuracy, how old we are biologically, meaning how, how well have we looked after our bodies, which, after all, is, is 80% of our aging rate. Only 20% is genetic. And so what, yes. what we're going to talk about Can we about highlight today, that for a second? Can we just sure. punctuate that 80% of that comes from what we do, what we put in our bodies, what we do to our bodies, and that only 20% is the genetic part of it? Because yeah. that's a big focus. That means you guys have a lot of control um, and you're empowered to to have control over how you age and how you look. Yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's great news. And that's why what we're saying today is so important. Um, and there are, there are two ways to slow down. Your, the aging of, of your hair and skin and nails. One is from the inside out, the other is the outside in. We'll talk about both of those ways today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so basically that clock, um, you can measure it in the skin. And what we're, we're discovering is that there are a number of ways to get rid of the old cells. Mm -hmm. Their clock has advanced rapidly. We'll talk about what are called senolytics, killing off the yeah. same cells. Yes. Um, and, and what I've been doing are ways to slow down the ticking of that clock. Um, mm -hmm. And I know, Serena, you do some of that too. And that's mm -hmm. probably the reason why your skin and hair look many years younger. And it's not that hard. It really isn't. It's a few mm -hmm. things that you do in your diet and what you apply to your skin. I do that at night mainly. And it, it seems to be paying off. And I know it's yeah. paying off for you too. And, you know, you can get to 52 and, you know, in my case, not yet have any major hair loss or any gray hair yet. Yeah, I, 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 it's like, it's really amazing that you don't I think you're really such a beacon of hope for so many. I do. So have many four, I think I have four gray hairs. Uh, I, I've, I've developed a few recently. Mm -hmm. but uh, it's not <laughs> um, Well, it's bound to happen at some point, I'm sure. Uh, okay. So we're going to talk about some of those as, uh, as David was saying, but we're also going to give you some, uh, some tools and, and things that you can do that are modalities that you can start applying to your daily habits that can also help and giving you a little bit of the science behind why those things work. So, so okay, so where should we start? Let's talk about 
let's talk about skin being our largest organ. So let's talk about skin and then maybe more yeah. things to hair and nails. Uh, and some of the things that we know works, some mm-hmm. of the things that we know that work that maybe aren't as I'm just going to call natural or holistic for lack of better terms. And then some things that we know can work. There might not be as much clinical data behind why they work, but there's at least some science to explain why they do. So shall we just dive into that and talk a little bit about skin and the importance of skin? Yeah. I I think when people think about aging and how they look, the skin is most important. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. There's a number of things we can do. Let's see. Let's let's start with uh, topical applications okay well, and then wait, we get... can we start with like hydration can we start with that and then yeah. go to topical okay. because let's remind people how easy it is at just staying hydrated and why that's important uh well geez having hydration is important for many reasons one is your skin needs water uh to be plump it also it helps remove toxins right? so mm-hmm. you're uh if you don't drink enough during the day your your urine uh, will will be depleted, uh, will be less, and your bloodstream instead will accumulate toxins, and you don't want to do that. So, uh, one of Tom Brady's secrets, uh, and I know he looks young, uh, I think we all agree, mm-hmm. is hydration. He's barely right. ever anywhere without a, a water bottle. Yeah. Um, so what? And, and that's we, one we of my biggest preaches, as you know, you know, hydration. Uh, that's easy. I always tell people, you know, one ounce per pound that you weigh. You know, that sounds challenging for a lot of people, but I, that's probably one of my biggest secret, not secrets. It's just staying super hydrated um, and not just, and throughout the course of the day, right? Like not just slamming a liter, you know, at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, but just throughout the course of the day. And um, I think in the morning, it's especially important because we don't know how much water we actually breathe out. We lose about a liter of water when we sleep at night if we're sleeping in between seven and eight hours, which people don't mm-hmm. realize. So, so. One of the many reasons that hydration is so important. All right. So, so what I do is I use um, a couple of, or th- about three different types of creams at night. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a moisturizer which was developed in my lab, and so that one has some uh, bioavailable resveratrol and some other things that are that are good. There's betaine in there, um, high, small amounts of hyaluronic acid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think. I'll talk about hyaluronic acid a little bit. That's a, it's a, it's a string of sugars that cells use to remain plump and actually it can also defend against cancer. And, uh, so I have a hyaluronic acid product, but there are small hyaluronic acid pieces that go in. Right. There was this article that I sent you recently about hyaluronic acid. I don't know if you want to chat about that here. Well, we can get to it when we talk about hyaluronic acid. Um, okay. So those, and, and can you break down why? those molecules in the topical creams that you use are so beneficial for skin health. Well, the, I know you've covered them before in other yeah. episodes, but specifically here for topical. Sure. Um, well, so I, I take supplements, but they don't, they don't, don't all get to the, get to the skin. And so um, what I like to do is I use this topical cream uh, that gets in at night. And mm-hmm. so that's got the, the moisturizers, the hyaluronic acid. It's got mm-hmm. these other molecules in it. The other thing that I do is um, I'm actually mixing in a little bit of, uh, of retinol mm-hmm. um, occasionally mm-hmm. every few days. So retinol will increase cell div- uh, division, um, mm-hmm. and it does help with wrinkles. So, you know, at 52, uh, you know, you're meant to have a lot of wrinkles. So far, I haven't gotten that many. And I think part of it is, is the retinol treatment. I put it here, mm-hmm. and I put it here. Uh, and then the I first, put it all over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, all definitely. over. And the neck and the decollete. Ladies, okay. you want to put it all over. Here's, here's another, here's a, here's a secret and a hack for the guys, mm-hmm. uh, and women who are having uh, thinning hair. Uh, I rub it here where, you know, I think it's, it's prone to being thin. And mm-hmm. it's known that, um, that retinol actually lengthens the hair growth phase. And mm-hmm. so I do that. Um, and then the third thing that I apply to my skin um, is a peptide. There's a, a mm-hmm. small peptide that is thought to boost skin d- division as well. And so together, I, I think I have uh, improved my skin over the years. If you look at my photos from even five years ago mm-hmm. uh, and, and t- even 10 years ago, my skin was not as good. And mm-hmm. so that really shows that the power of science can actually work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of these things I'm talking about today are backed by scientific studies. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, now that since you brought up uh, retinol, let's talk about the amount because you know there are there are different products out there with varying amounts of retinol, and we're talking you know retinol A for most of you guys out there. Um, and I don't know that you can you have any recommendation on the numbers, um, but there are different varying levels of retinol, and uh, you do need to have a certain amount to have the level of efficacy that we want to have in skin? Well, so I use um, 0.5% uh, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I think, a, a moderately high dose, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I don't put it straight on my skin because it can actually cause dryness, I find. Mm -hmm. And so I, I mix it with uh, my moisturizer and apply it that way. Mm -hmm. And so I, the amount that I put on my finger is the size of a, about a half a pea. That's mm -hmm. not a lot. And uh, um, I tend not to go close to the eyes because if it gets in your eyes, it can really hurt. But I, I do actually go higher than most people recommend. Mm -hmm. um, I try and get under there. And, you know, I don't have any bags or, or a lot of wrinkles under there. And I think that's partly what's helping. Is your retinol? The retinol, you know, pe people on the internet are claiming that I've had plastic surgery. The answer is no. I haven't done any plastic surgery. Um, it's all natural. I haven't either, by the way. For all of you guys out there that, you know, <laughs> every time we're on here, there are comments like that. I have no problem sharing what it is that I do. I do all kinds of different, um, and, and we'll talk about this, right, David? We'll talk about the things that we can do to our skin to stress it, to give those bouts of stress that help create, it's almost like creating hormesis in our skin. So that's what we do with, uh, with uh, microneedling and, you know, we can talk about that a little bit after we've talked about um, all the topicals and, and the reasons why these topicals help. So I, I'm really glad that you talked about the percentage of uh, retinol that you use because that's probably why you don't, you know, put it all over your face because it's a little bit strong. But there are products with lower percentages of retinol that allow you to use it nightly. Um, and that's what I use. So I use a smaller percentage, a much lower percentage, around 4 or 5%, but I use it all over. And that's what I do every night. So what else can we talk about topically? Um, well, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot of there's topical. There's just like, hey, look. Look who's there. There's Gizmo. Yeah, there's Gizmo. Um, yeah, I think uh, what's important when we're talking about the topical is just what you had talked about in your podcast about um, the integrity of the skin and the thickness of it and what we can do to help build the functional and structural integrity of that skin. Some of it is topical, some of it are other products. So, um, and of course, someone says something about SPF for sure. I mean, there's, I use probably slightly different things than David does, uh, but, you know, and we can dive into what I put on my skin as well. Um, but maybe we can talk about why it's so important to maintain uh, the structural integrity of the skin. Oh, yeah. When it starts, you know, when that starts to sort of deplete, I guess. Yeah. Or break down. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So first, first up, you and I use sunscreen. We very rarely get sunburned, and uh, a little bit of sun is fine. Go out for a walk, you get your vitamin D. But I, I have been in a lab and in an office for most of my adult life, and I think mm -hmm. that's also been very good for my skin. Not so much good for my, uh, for my well being, but I, I, if I go out in the sun. I do a lot of kayaking in, in the summer. I always have a sunscreen on. Um, and I try to use sunscreens that don't have those harsh chemicals in them, although it's very hard to find those. There's titanium dioxide containing them. But if yeah. your skin starts to get red after you have been in the sun, you know you've overdone it. And that's really important. It's not just creating mutations in your DNA that can lead to skin cancer. It actually accelerates your epigenetic clock that we talked about earlier. Right. And so, yeah, just a day's worth of sunburn will add to that clock. And so you don't get away with it. It may heal, but it will come back decades later to cause wrinkles and, and blemishes. So I avoid that. Um, so the, the other thing to know is that our skin has a lot of bacteria on it that are good and bad, and the good ones keep away the bad ones. And there are over a 1,000 species of bacteria on our skin, and there are four main types. And we want to foster them. We want them to grow. We want them to be healthy and you don't want to use harsh soaps on your face that will get rid of them. They like to collect around the sebaceous glands that secrete the oil. Your face is, is one of the oiliest parts of your body. And what we find with aging is that um, the, the composition changes. 
um, and you can actually maintain the health of your microbiome in part by eating a really healthy diet. Yes. But also, increasingly, that I find products on the internet that I haven't tried uh, that you can uh, add back some of the microbiome. I don't know, Serena, yeah. have you ever tried any of those? I do. There's there's quite a few lines, product lines, actually. Thank you for asking that, that do focus on your overall um, microbiome, so beyond your gut. But this, the, the, there's the microbiome on your skin, you know, it's all inclusive of your entire system. And so, as David was saying, there there is healthy bacteria that we want to have on our skin, and there are there are specific products. I obviously can't name brands here, but if you type in, um, you know, probiotic skincare, they will pop, they will pop up, and there's probably three or four of them out there that have you know they came onto market I would say three, four, or five years ago, um, and there people are having really good results from using. Yeah. using um skincare that has that on there okay so as we move forward uh, there was a lot of comments about sunscreen because we were talking about retinol yes absolutely retinol retin-a um they can make you more sun photosensitive along with some of the supplements so there are things that you can ingest that also make you photosensitive so we absolutely advocate using a sun a sunblock every single day whenever you can and I personally use physical sunblocks. I don't use chemical ones. So someone talked about zinc. Zinc creams are great. Um, it's really hard to produce a high quality, effective, uh, toxin free sunblock. I heard there might be one coming on the market, but before that one's available for the public, choose something that's like a physical sunscreen. Uh, so you're not absorbing all that because as we talked about, the skin is your largest organ on your body. David can talk a lot more about that. So we're absorbing toxins and we're absorbing everything, everything that goes on our skin and our environment, which is why detox and hydration is so important. Mm-hmm. Uh, and something that we'll talk about later, which is like lymphatic and dry brushing. These are things that you can go pick up a $2 brush at the local um, pharmacy or order on Amazon. And just the action of dry brushing will help rejuvenate your skin. It'll stimulate your lymphatic system. It'll stimulate de- the detoxification process. So um, somebody's mm-hmm. suggesting I start a skin line, uh, skincare line. We'll we'll see about that. But were, were you referring to the uh, mm-hmm. the sunblock that I'm working on with my team? I, I was referring to something that's still somewhat top secret that yeah. people can learn about if you go to the link in our bio and you click on the link to sign up for our longevity lifestyle series. You will be the first to know. When this product comes to market, um, when you can sign up, there will be a wait list, but it's like a wait list to get on a wait list. So I highly recommend you go to the link in our bios, sign up for that, and you also get the notes from all of this. So I see a million, um, a million uh, messages about replays and such. The people who sign up get a link to the replays in their email box when they sign up. So yeah. there's that. Um, so someone, someone just asked about niacinamide and, and niacin. So this yeah. is vitamin B3. Uh, okay. So this is what I what I work on. Uh, molecules that help make vitamin, um, well, turn vitamin B3 into NAD. Mm-hmm. NAD is this molecule that we lose as we get older. And it's important not just for our internal organs, but for our skin. And, uh, and so vitamin B3 or niacin, or also known as niacinamide, even known as nicotinamide, yeah. is in products. Nicotinic acid is probably the main one that's used. And that seems to work really well. And probably it's because it's uh, boosting the levels and activity of these genes that I work on, these proteins that defend the body called sirtuins. Mm-hmm. So that, that's the answer to that. I, I think there's a lot of validity to uh, vitamin B3 for the skin applied topically. Uh, and that's one of the things that we're working on for future products. Yeah. So you guys will can stay tuned and you'll hear more about that. Uh, and, 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 and to be fair, there are, those elements um, and those compounds are in some pre-existing products out there. So you can look it up. You know what Dr. St. Clair said about what can help your skin. So look for these products in your topical products. Yeah. Um, okay, so topically, what else should we talk about? We've talked about retinol. Uh, we've talked well, about so there's collagenase mm-hmm. inhibitors. Vitamin E has been shown to inhibit collagenase. And collagenase mm-hmm. increases as we get older and starts to break down the structure of the skin. Mm-hmm. So Take some vitamin E. That's good. And what about some, you want to talk about 
food? Talk about antioxidants applied to the skin or eating? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about, okay, so we're going to, we're going to go from the outside in right now. So we're talking about topicals. Um, would you like to talk about how antioxidants apply topically, how that can help if it does, how much it helps? That might be a good base. And then we'll dive into what you can, what you can ingest in terms of antioxidants. Ah, uh, sure. Well, the, the thing to know about antioxidants and, and oxidants, uh, also known as reactive oxygen species, is that you need to get the balance just right. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want a lot of, of uh, free radicals because they'll damage our DNA and cause aging. But we also need to have a, a few of them because they actually cause the body to undergo hormesis, this thing. Hormesis we've talked about before. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And you yeah. can have hormesis in your cells, even in the little parts of the cells that make energy called mitochondria. And so taking antioxidants is important and taking the right amount is important. And so by putting vitamin C on the skin and other antioxidants, it's helpful, but also just be aware you don't want to do too much because it can actually backfire. Well, and you also want to make sure that the vitamin C that you're using hasn't oxidized because that's not going to help your skin. Right, right. Uh, and Ideally, if you're using a product that's high in vitamin C, you, it, you want it to be as clear as possible because once it gets discolored, once it starts turning you know, yellow or brown, toss it because that, that product has now oxidized and you don't want to be putting that on your skin. Exactly. And resveratrol is, is a mild antioxidant, which helps. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I put it on the skin all over. Mm -hmm. uh, but resveratrol also activates uh, SIRT1 is a SIRT2 in defense right. event. And that's also mimicking the benefits of fasting, of, of good food, and of exercise. Like, I think of resveratrol as exercise for the skin, actually. And I saw someone posted that they do yoga for their skin. And yes. So, uh, yeah, I, love I mean, that. that can help, right? You know, no, move, I mean, move, okay. And so I know we're going to talk about what you can put inside, which we will. We'll talk about nutrition. But I think that's a perfect segue into what you can do on your skin uh, and on your face. So yoga for the skin is great. I think that's why we've seen such a trend with like using a gua sha is because you're basically exercising the muscles on your face. You know, mm -hmm. we focus on the muscles on our body. We know what the benefits are. Um, we know what the benefits are in terms of longevity. We talk so often about why exercise is so important, but it's also about exercising the muscles on your face, which you, which we don't do, you know, unless we're doing something like face yoga or gua sha, or um, I do something called microcurrent which is using, you know, electrical currents to stimulate the muscles on the face. And you can explain why that makes sense. So stimulating the, the muscles in your face um, is like exercise and muscles release what are called mitokines. And these are beneficial. They're anti-inflammatory. Um, you might even induce mitohormesis, which is getting yeah. your mitochondria to, to experience a bit of stress. Like when you exercise, um, or take the drug metformin, you're stressing out your mitochondria, and they actually put out these micropeptides, one's called MOTC, M-O-T-S-C, that we talked about before, it's a peptide, and yeah. that is very good for the body. And so I think that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. I've always wondered this. So you don't even have a wrinkle, which is miraculous. I don't- I do, I, when I smile, I do. I do. No, I, I've seen you in person. You literally have no wrinkles, It's it's a, it's amazing. So one thing that you do is microneedling, and I've never tried that. And you, I think you also do abrasion or, or whatever it's called. Oh, okay. So I do two things. Well, there's three things that I tell everyone if you have access to do it and it's with, uh, I prefer doing it under in a clinic where it's, it's run by a physician and there's highly trained estheticians. Um, I say that because there's a lot of little clinics that pop up around LA and it would it just to be mindful about where you go to do it. But I do microneedling, as you said. I do microcurrent, and I also do um, a dermaplaning. And that's basically where someone uses a razor, and uh, they scrape all the dead skin cells off your face. But it also stresses the skin just enough to cause an inflammatory response, which is um, what you're saying is what's beneficial throughout the body. So I do that. Uh, and then the microneedling I do, which you can explain. I know you haven't done it. I highly recommend it. I've done it for years. Uh, and I do. And, and in the past, you know, they, they infuse your skin with 
vitamins and, and now, and then it kind of migrated to peptides. I've also done it with plasma, with PRP, and, and I've done it with exosomes as well. So, okay. and so, so they- explain all the things, stereos, like why this is so wow. amazing. And then there's a difference also between a pin microneedling technique and then um, the French technique, which is by hand. There's there's different okay. results um, for your skin. Is it painful? Yes, it's very painful. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Well, it looks like it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can numb your face, but then you're putting something on your face that's not necessarily clean. I mean, um, lidocaine is... is it's not that it's unsafe. It's just that, and you could, or you could just you could just suck it up and bear it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you. You're you've got a lot of uh, resilience and and grit. So so the what you're really doing is is inducing mild stress on the skin, little little wounds, and that leads to growth factors and yes. other peptides that are released that are um, promote a healing, but also in doing so, they'll stimulate your stem cells to divide and you get more yes. rough with the skin and your skin gets thicker as a result. Yes. So all of those things are really good. And uh, and so I do that chemically. You do it also chemically, but also physically. Yeah. Uh, I mean, occasionally I whack my face, but that's mostly just to wake myself up. <laughs> the- <laughs> um, yeah, I would say that microneedling might be a little more effective than <laughs> whacking your face. Um, but yeah, I do that. And if, and, and there's also sort of like specific protocol when you're doing it, just how to prep your skin for it. Um, obviously doing the needling, what goes into your skin as your skin is open and absorbing, uh, whether it's peptides or exosomes or PRP plasma or, um, you know, different types of serums. And then you kind of want to hit that skin with some red light, uh, and some oxygen. So there's like a multi-step process that I go through. I found it to be very effective. Um, but aids the skin when it's healing, and then um, okay. what is the French I, I, method? Is right, like, I was going to ask you that. What is it? Uh, the French method. So, so typically when you're going to med spas or you know estheticians that do the microneedling, that you could actually buy the roller that's available that people can buy, it and you can do it at home. You just want to make sure it's very sterile, um, and you don't overdo it. So, um, at at med spas or with your dermatologist, they have a pen, and it's just it in a microseconds is just putting tiny little holes in your face um, at different depths, depending what the needle is. And the French method is when it's just one needle. So instead of a roller with multiple, multiple pinpoints, you do, it's just one needle, very thin needle, and then they switch out the needle. Once it dulls, they switch it out. And as they're, as they're breaking the skin and punch and, you know, causing trauma to the skin, which is the minimum amount of trauma that we want, that stress that we want. It's they're also injecting either plasma or exosomes or serums or peptides. So that's the French method. And so it goes deeper. You see effects maybe six weeks later, as opposed to a more surface, more topical uh, stress on the, on the face. And you'll get those results in two or three weeks. Yeah. So I would like, to talk about um, either food or supplements? Uh, we should talk about both. Should okay. we talk about supplements first since we're kind of like there sure. and then we can talk about food? Okay. So, yeah, I started taking resveratrol in my early 30s. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'm now 52. Um, and I don't regret it at all. At the time, it wasn't known if it would do anything. All we had was yeast cells living longer and then we showed worms and flies, and it was really early days. But I took it anyway, um, figuring if it doesn't hurt me, you know, it's it's not really a, a risk. Uh, but I really am glad that I have done that because I, I I do believe that my health internally and externally and how I look is partly due to that. So I've been taking a gram of resveratrol for all those years, over a decade, mm-hmm. and uh, and it turns on the waist defenses. Um, I also take uh, NMN, which I've talked about before, which raises NAD levels, just like vitamin B3, but even better. And that I think is is important. NMN is is interesting because we've shown in animal studies, uh, and um, and we're working on human studies now, uh, increases blood flow in muscle okay. for sure, in the brain, or also I, I believe it would work in the skin as well. So I think that blood flow is very important for the skin. Actually, we know it is, and even the hair. 
the mm. lack of blood flow of hair is partly what leads to hair loss. And so mm. that's one of my, my tips. Um, and, but, yeah. and to add to that about blood flow, PEMF, you know, that really helps with blood flow. There's different things that also help with blood flow in addition to the supplements. So I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt, but I said. No, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I also wanted to mention that PRP is platelet rich plasma. Uh, um, oh, yes, for, I'm sorry for those of you who don't know. Yeah. yeah, and it's filled with lots of goodies, uh, exosomes. It's filled with peptides that are coming out of those cells. Um, all, all the good things. And you can use it on your skin and on your hair. So we'll get to the hair in a minute. Yes. Um, the, the, the one thing that's, that somebody asked about is senolytics, uh, the quercetin yeah. or tracetin. Some people call it physetin, which is a senolytic. So these are natural molecules that kill or at least uh, help to kill senescent cells. These are the zombie cells that accumulate in all of our tissues uh, and also in the skin. Mm -hmm. And we can see them actually build up um, in the around the hair follicle and in the sebaceous gland, and they're really bad. They cause inflammation. They cause aging, and so yeah. you can actually, yeah, and so you can you can take senolytics. And uh, somebody mentioned earlier Jim Kirkland, who's a colleague and friend of mine. He's been running clinical trials on these molecules with mm -hmm. some really promising results. And so I, I've been trying these out on myself, as you know. I like to be a guinea pig. Um, yeah. No, no offense, Serena, but you're, you're my co guinea pig. And we <laughs> like to learn so that we can share with people what we find works and what doesn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I went through a course of uh, synolysis, okay. senolytics, um, about uh, about nine months ago. Mm -hmm. And I, I did it with um, quercetin and physetin. Yep. And what I found was uh, it was really quite remarkable. In my own experience, I did it for a month. Um, and I, I took um, both those compounds every morning mixed with my yogurt and my resveratrol. Yeah. Uh, I actually found that my skin looked a lot better after that month and mm -hmm. people actually noticed it. Mm -hmm. um, now that's, I mean, clearly that's not a scientific study. There was no control. I didn't have an evil twin that I didn't treat. Uh, which well, I've done evil. the same. You know, I've, I've also done that same protocol. I did it for uh, two months. How did you feel? How did it go for you? Um. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I wasn't looking at my skin specifically, you know, at results, but I, I would say my skin looked, <laughs> I can't well, say, it's, it's hard, I did it's hard it, to I did it for of... reasons, I did it for my brain, I, you know, as you know, um, I did it for, you know, for, to get rid of the, all the other zombie cells, but I also, you know, there's other ways to do it as well. There's peptides, there's SS31, it's highly beneficial, obviously, for your skin and other parts of your body. It's just great to take out all those senescent cells so whatever you're doing to do it is helpful yeah. right well, it's mm -hmm. it's hard to get rid of wrinkles that don't exist so you, you might not see the effects but mm -hmm. um yeah i i still i think you look great and uh if anything you look better than you did before so you know these oh. aren't these are not scientific studies of course but mm -hmm. but you can try them there, there doesn't seem to be any downside to doing it mm -hmm. and you can actually here's a tip you can go online and go to clinical trials dot gov clinicaltrials.gov and look up james kirkland k-i-r-k-l-n-d yeah. and yeah. you'll find and look up physetin f-i-s-e-t-i-n get a pen write this down and mm -hmm. or write in senolytic mm -hmm. and you'll see the protocol for his clinical trials mm -hmm. okay and you can if you want talk to your doctor if you and i recommend you do because anything that's a major change with supplements could harm you, if, especially if you're taking other medicines and supplements. But you can look at what he does and get get a guide as to what might work for you. That is such that's such a helpful tip. Um, thank you for that. And also, and we'll definitely have that in our notes, you guys. Like I know that you're taking notes, and you were done with Doctor Sinclair said, but we'll definitely have that in our show notes as well because that's really helpful. And again, here just to give you guys the tools to empower yourself to kind of figure out what works best for you. Uh, so that was really helpful. I'm actually going to go look that up as well. Um, see what else I can add to my protocol. Um, we didn't talk that much about pigmentation, which I think is really important to, to discuss, at least just a little bit, because it's so prevalent. I mean, it's a marker of aging, right? So we don't have the same type of skin we did when we're in our, you know, when we're a child in our teens and our twenties and so forth. And it's really with older, with older, um, 
individuals in their 70s or 80s that we see, we see that, we see the pigmentation. So can we talk a little bit about that, why that happens and what we can do to prevent that? Yep. Uh, we've never talked about this. Uh, so you don't need to know. Have, you and I have never talked about this. No. So let's, let's test secrets. my knowledge. Mm-hmm. All right. I think you're testing me today. Uh, <laughs> no. No, I'm just having fun. All right. Okay, so pigmentation mm-hmm. uh, is caused uh, in part by melanocytes in your skin. They become permanently turned on and you get mm-hmm. you know, a really dark tan that doesn't go, easily go away. But one way to remove them and to even prevent them is to use molecules that inhibit the enzyme called tyrosinase because mm-hmm. uh, that's important for making melanin, which is the dark yeah. color. And there are uh, skin products that have tyrosinase inhibitors. One of the ones that I like, is resveratrol. Uh, actually, mm-hmm. it turns out that resveratrol inhibits tyrosinase. Um, it does a lot of other things, but that's one of the, the things. Um, and so that's the that's the main one I know of. What are the other molecules that you know of that you can use to depigment or reduce? Pigments? Well, I mean, I've had I've had history with melasma, and you know, I we can dive into this part a little bit more when we do our little hormone specific episode uh, for both men and women um, but that can come with uh, hormone hormonal changes and being on birth control so I had a lot of uh, I had uh, had a lot of melasma and besides staying out of the sun besides all the topical things that I was doing to cause stress to the skin like the microneedling I also stayed away from tyrosine I really made sure that I didn't have I didn't have a very low tyrosine intake in my diet for exactly the reasons that you said um, and there is a, there, this is a secret because I've only been doing this for about six months. You guys, I haven't even told David about this. So I do take uh, a tranexamic acid uh, and that you can find, if you Google it, you can find it in topical uh, products. I'm not going to name brands, but if you type it in, you'll find it in some more natural uh, products, uh, some clean beauty, but and then also some that have other elements to it, so not quite as clean, and that can really help for whatever reason. It helps with pigmentation. It helps break up that melanin in the skin, um, and it really kind of helps to neutralize or counterbalance that hyperpigmentation. So Great. you might so, be able to explain why that works. Uh, well, it's going to inhibit the production of, of the pigment in your skin right and inhibit yes it yeah. does well it prevent it doesn't provide the precursor as, as much so that's another way don't feed the feed the fire yeah you know i'm, I'm cognizant of the time we, we want to cover let's see hair botox maybe co- collagen gosh we have so many things plus nutrition yeah. um we only have about 10 more minutes so but we, so we are going to do more of this and this is posted so don't worry about that um, yeah I mean, that was a secret that I just shared. So I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at right now. (laughs) Um, We both shared secrets. Should we just go over nutrition really quick? Just because a lot of it's basic. A lot of it is they've heard before. They've heard with you, with me, the different types of food they can eat. um, Why antioxidants still have value and they still have a place, even if they're not fully age reversing. Um, Maybe you can start to talk about that for a little bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, so lots of foods have antioxidants in them, of course. You, if you look for the colored ones, you, you and I independently espouse the benefits of, of colored foods uh, because the, they don't just have uh, a lot of antioxidants. They also have polyphenols, which include yes. resveratrol, quercetin, physetin, uh, ECGC from green tea, which is an antioxidant, but also causes mitohormesis, which we mentioned is important. Yeah. So colored foods are great. And, but what about the antioxidants? So I, I sometimes say, and even in my book, Lifespan, I say antioxidants are not all they're cracked up to be. So what do I mean by that? It's that, that some of the properties of these polyphenols um, are not just antioxidant properties. They actually turn on the body's natural defenses, which includes turning on the body's antioxidant enzyme. And so I'm not saying antioxidants are not good for you. Of course they are. I, I take vitamin C as well. Resveratrol is an antioxidant, vitamin E. But what I'm saying is that they're not the entire solution to the problem. They're just part of the solution. Um, And so eating foods that are full of antioxidants, by all means, um, you know, green tea is full of them. Uh, If you like red wine, I've given up red uh, wine in general. 
uh, yes. after you and I had a serious alcohol. Problem. You guys, alcohol dries you out, and it and it definitely is not going to give you youthful skin. Not saying yes. it's not fun. I'm saying if you're talking about looking younger, longer than less alcohol. Thank you for all these badges, you guys. Today was really has been really fun, and I really appreciate all these badges and hearts and really kind comments. Um, it just helps, and it's a lot of fun to do this with you guys. Or at least I have fun. I think they've had yeah. fun too. Oh, it's a great crowd today. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> really appreciate it. Yeah. So eating the colors of the rainbow. David talks a lot about yeah. xenohormesis. We've talked about it here, why that's important. Our foods that have high levels of antioxidants and are great for all the reasons that David just said. Um, we can give a whole list of foods. Actually, they're already on my blog. So if you are interested in specific foods for skin health, um, they're already on the blog. If you go to the link in bio, we will probably include it in the show notes there as well. Um, and you talked about green tea, actually even cacao, even cacao and high quality uh, coffee that has no mold also has antioxidant value to oh, it. So I want some chocolate now. I really could go for some dark chocolate. Yes, dark chocolate. That's one of our favorite foods. So Yeah, and, um, and nuts. Nuts we nibble on a lot. And mm -hmm. nuts have vitamin E, so that's another yes. good reason. And and Brazil nuts, selenium, for those who are vegan, very important. Very important. Mm -hmm. um, and I How think about collagen? Hmm? Oh, you go. And then we get on to collagen. Because some yes. people ask about it. I know. There's, there's so, and you guys, I think we're just going to have to do another episode of this because you guys are loving it so much today, which is great. Um, what I really want to call out, which might sound like common knowledge, is sugar. You know, sugar is not your friend if you want to really maintain youthful skin uh and that's not just and obviously with david's talked about that i've talked about that when it comes to longevity immune health but definitely also your the health of your skin um the health of your gut you know fine lines wrinkles all of this uh sugar and processed foods really contribute to that so simple things you can remove from your diet if it's currently in your diet um and you can start anytime today and having a little bit of sugar here and there is okay, but um, just be mindful of it. And David, if you can just like give a little bit of the science on why sugar is. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've avoided sugar for at least twenty years, and I'm I'm glad I did. Mm -hmm. So sugar will do two things. The main thing is that it bonds to your proteins and inactivates them, and you get what are called uh, advanced glycation end products. You get glucuronidated proteins is one that's in your blood that's an indicator of diabetes called HbA1c. Mm -hmm. um, your doctor can measure that and it's a good indicator of diabetes. But you don't want to get anywhere near diabetes. A steady, mm -hmm. relatively low level of blood sugar is what we're aiming for for extra longevity. And mm -hmm. it's known that people who can control their blood sugar are healthier in the long run and probably have a slower aging clock. So mm -hmm. avoid foods that have a, what's called a high glycemic index. Um, yes. That spike your spike your blood sugar. I've mm -hmm. tested my own with with a, uh, a blood monitor, a glucose monitor. So I know that foods like what just plain white rice, um, of course, desserts are a nightmare for for the body. It's okay to, to steal a little bit, a little bit of your dessert. That's what I do. <laughs> but uh, generally, I don't eat a lot of dessert. And the other thing that sugar does is that it dampens your body's defenses against aging. Yeah. When there's a lot of nutrients around, a lot of amino acids, particularly uh, leucine and serine, and a lot of sugar, your body doesn't defend itself. It, it believes that there's no reason to defend itself. And those defenses such that we've talked about, the sirtuins, mTOR, AMPK, they shut down when there's too much energy around. And so you don't want to get those spikes. And thirdly, if you go like this through the day with your blood sugar, you'll feel totally overactive and energetic, yeah. but then you'll crash, your body overcompensates and your sugar goes down, yeah. then you feel tired, hungry, and have a brain fog. And yeah. so it's much better to just eat smaller amounts. And actually, I, I prefer to eat very small amounts for breakfast and for lunch and then uh -huh. eat most of my calories at dinner. But I, I know you, you, you prefer to eat, um, you know, not just one meal a day, but everyone's different. Well, I have like an eating window. Um, and so I still fast. I just eat within a window of time to kind of get in all the nutrients that I need. Um, and and so many questions about sugar, obviously processed sugar, anything with a high glycemic index, um, even natural sugar. So a lot of questions about fruit and dry fruit. They are still high in sugar. 
So I'm not, we're not saying don't have fruit and don't have things for sugar. Just be mindful and be balanced about it and know that it's not serving you if your goal is to have like, skin and longevity. Uh, so just to balance it out. Uh, and there are sugar substitutes that do not re- do not raise your glycemic index. Like mon- uh, monk fruit sugar. Yeah, monk fruit is great. Uh, we use that a lot. Um, yes, we use stevia. There are there are um, sugar alternatives. So um, let's talk about hair. Hair. <laughs> all right, let's hair. Talk about hair. All right. Okay. First of all, all those men out there want to know about hair. All right. Okay. So do do what Serena does. Look at her hair. It's unfreaking believable. So my, <laughs> my so here's my hair. Uh, it's all natural. I do, so and fine. I haven't. No extensions, you guys. It's real. It is. I can vouch for that. Um, so the, so I haven't talked about my hair. I've talked in the third person, but here I'm going to reveal what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So I eat a good diet. That's the main thing. I've been using those supplements I've talked about today, and I think that pre- prevents my hair cells from aging. Yes. Um, I use retin Retin A on my scalp. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I use, um, minoxidil, which is, um, uh, the inhibitor or actually promotes blood, uh, flow in your, in your scalp. And so and the red light, you do red light too. Oh, right? and the red light too. Yes. I've mentioned that. So let's quickly talk about it. So the minoxidil I put on there because I know it improves, um, blood flow. It's meant to be just here, but it does actually work here as well, guys. You can use it down here. I put it on at night. You can put it on during the day, but it's really oily. And there's also red light therapy, which has been proven to work. Infrared light actually stimulates hair growth. Yeah. And uh, and I, I put that on. You can have a, a comb. You can sometimes get, I use a cap. I just put on there for, for 10 minutes and it's great. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, those are my secrets and they seem to work for me at least. Okay. So I can dive more into my hair regimen. And again, you guys, not extensions i have gotten so much grief over the years not extensions but biotin has been really helpful for some people that i've um uh shared uh, men and women uh i do tons of grains and um that comes in form of juice and superfoods um that's what's in just that water um there's also hoshi Wu for people that are trying to kind of fight grays we don't have the clinical on that yet maybe we'll have it by the next time we do another episode here but Hoshi has been really helpful, uh, even for uh, clients that have had cancer and their hair came back gray. Hoshi was something that has helped them bring back a little bit of color. So we're, we're, we're way past time and we're going to have to go. But I so love today's um, chat. It was so much fun. It was so much fun engaging with you all. I know that you guys have a million more questions. So I would say send them in. Didn't get as many questions sent in this time. It really helps when you guys send in those questions. It helps us decide what we're going to chat about. Um, and thank you, David. This is really fun. I think what? everybody, everybody, and I appreciate you sharing your secrets. It's yeah. wonderful. I've, I learn something new about you every time. But this this episode was really special. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. This is super special for me too, and special for with you guys. So thank you guys so much. Happy Valentine's Day, and um, we'll see you guys next week. So thanks so much. All right. Bye. Bye.